Hello, everyone. My name is Mark Donaldson. My Chinese name is Heilong. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Mark D. Heilong. Today, I want to talk to you about why it's good to be average when investing in, in the market. So um, many of you, some of you may know who know me, uh, know that uh, I used to be a financial planning consultant with a large uh, national uh, organization here in Canada. And uh, I left that role to get back into tech. It's really my first love and what I'm very, very good at. And I really enjoy doing technology very much. So lately, a lot of people, as you, you know, have a lot of free time on their hands. So a lot of people are learning how to um, become uh, DIY investors or day traders, if you will. Oh. Or speculators and they're learning about the markets uh, using forums and blogs like reddit to educate themselves on how to invest um, uh, for themselves and to sort of um, make really good use of the time so they can learn and uh, build some wealth and um, you know take a little bit of risk here and learn in the, in the process so what i really wanted to discuss was a few topics about um, why it's good to be average when investing in the market. <clears throat> so um, any type of situation that you encounter um, incurs some risk on one side, and then the reward is on the other side. And what lies in the middle is volatility. So when you're investing, you're gonna incur some amount of risk. So you take all the money that you've made working and saved up, and then you're gonna take that money and invest it in the market. And then over some period of time, you're going to incur some risk with your money being invested in the market. <clears throat> your money will be exposed to volatility along the way. And then at some point in the future, your money is either going to grow and go up or it's going to diminish and go down. And that is your reward. Now, your reward can be growth, which is really, really good. Everybody wants that. Or your reward can be loss, which most people don't want. Um, so that's basically the objective of investing in the markets is you take your hard-earned money, you invest it in the markets from what you've saved, you uh, incur some risk by waiting for it to grow or do something in the market over time, and then at the end you get some kind of reward. Um, so you can't really get a reward if you don't take any risk, and life is a very risky endeavor. We all take risks. And um, so we can get some kind of return or payback uh, in, in the future. So by investing in individual stocks, when you do that, every individual stock that you buy, whether you own Tesla or Amazon or GameStop, for example, all of those individual stocks or companies can one day theoretically go to zero. All of your money invested in an individual stock can theoretically go to zero. But on the other side, if you invest in the market average, which is basically buying a pool of stocks that represent the moving average of the market, theoretically, if you bought every single individual stock or a piece of them, each company in the market, theoretically, your average stake in the market can never go to zero. On the other side of that, it's not as risky, so it can never go to infinity either. You just basically ride the average. So what does this mean? So based on the evidence, over time, the market has shown to always go up with periodic dips of losses. But on average, the market always goes up. So why is that? The market always goes up because human beings, we're, we're risky, and we tend to take educated risks in order to get some kind of profit or return. Some acts of risk that humans under, undergo is to become an entrepreneur and to start a business. It's a very risky endeavor. It requires a lot of personal sacrifice, a lot of money, a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of lost sleep, a lot of difficulty, um, but you do it in the process to learn, personally learn, to learn with others, to help yourself grow and others grow, <clears throat> and eventually bring a product or a service to the market at some point in the future. Now, 
uh, I'm not going to go too far into like venture capitalists, uh, investment, and, and so on. But basically, people make a huge bet on starting a business because they want some kind of payoff in the future. So when these companies or businesses get really, really big, then and they want to raise more money, they often turn to the markets to do that. And investors come along, they have institutional investors and say street, main street investors, they'll come and they'll buy a, a stake in your company in hopes that they will get some kind of benefit or reward in the future. So uh, that whole time transaction, that time-based transaction is known as the time value of money. And that's something I will more than likely discuss in another video because it is Time value of money is the most important uh, finance principle you will ever learn in your lifetime. It is, it is quintessential to everything about finance, whether it's personal finance, corporate finance, and pretty much money in general. So back to why it's good to be average. So um, let's see here. Let's take a look. Um, I'm going to open my browser. Okay. All right, and uh, see here. Okay, let me just close this. All right, so I'll give you an example. So here we have Vanguard. So I'm in Canada. So in Canada, you can buy an ETF. An ETF is basically um, a pool of funds that you can afford that will give you diversification. So what does diversification means that you're buying a little slice of every single pie in a market for the lowest price and the lowest cost. And what that allows you to do, it allows you to track the market average over time uh, for the least amount of cost. So you will maximize the return in the long run. This is much better for you and your money because you have a very low risk, mind you, you give up some kind of returns as a result of your lower risk, but buying the average is pretty much the quintessential sweet spot to invest in. So the current, uh, I think, net, net asset value price in Canadian dollars is $88.11. Market value is $88.12. Uh, I guess as of close on February 5th, which was Friday and today is Sunday. So the management fee and the management expense ratio are very, very low. So why is this? Um, when you buy the market average, basically you don't have to do a lot of manipulation of buying or trading stocks in and out of your fund, your ETF uh, fund. Therefore, someone doesn't have to um, go and you know, buy in and buy out and, and uh, rebalance the portfolio. Uh, for you. So you pay very little fees, some of the lowest fees, including the management expense ratio. So if somebody is behind a desk or behind a computer or a group of people who are determining which stocks to put into the ETF. So that way you can get the return over time. So as of close December 31st, 2020, the assets under management AUM is $3.7 billion, which is very, very good. It has a very good, um, uh, inertia behind it for you to safely invest. So the objective is to track the uh, S&P 500 index ETF seeks to track to the extent reasonably possible and therefore, and before fees and expenses, the performance of a broad US equity index that measures the investment return of large capitalization US stocks. Currently the Vanguard ETF seeks to track the S&P 500 index or any successor thereto. It invests directly and directly primarily in stocks in US companies. So yeah, so that's, that's basically it. So they're primarily US domiciled corporations, employs a mass, a passively managed, fully replicated index strategy. So passively managed means somebody's not trading every day like a day trader would. They're just sitting back pretty much with their feet up on the desk, sipping coffee and just watching time go by literally. Um, it uses efficient and cost-effective index management techniques. It does issue a quarterly dividend and uh, it shows the income distribution per unit and its inception date. So this has been around since 2012 and it's el eligible to be invested in like RSPs, risk, 
uh, RIFs, RESPs. So these are just type of investment products like registered retirement savings plan, income fund, RESP education, tax-free savings account, uh, deferred profit sharing plan, and, and so on. So here we can see a chart. Uh, we can also go via table, but let's look at it this way. So uh, let's see here. Since inception, it has produced a, let's see, since inception, it has produced an, a near 17.9% average rate of return since inception, which is since 2012, which is really, really good for just being average. So what does that mean? Um, let's go back to passively managed. Passively managed means you don't have to fret and worry about it you know, coming up on your phone to have taken a nosedive off a diving board and shot down. You can live your life while the buying the market average, it gives you the freedom because you're passively invested. You don't have to actively manage your investments. You can pretty much um, live your life. And this is a really, really good rate of return, 17.9%. Now, mind you, if you were able to pick a winner like Amazon or Tesla, they have rates of return in excess of 300, some of them 600%. But those would be anomalies. And not many people have the, um, the financial uh, education uh, in order to make that kind of informed decision to pick one stock that's going to be a winner. It is very difficult to predict the, the, uh, the future. And we have uh, different benchmarks. So what we do is we look at the beta. Beta of one is pretty much the market average. So um, we want it to be around one, which is really, really good. And it has a standard deviation from the mean of about 14.17%. And we have it here at 0.89 sharp ratio, which is, which is pretty much tracking the market average. It's as risk-free as you can get it um, in a passive uh, portfolio. Uh, let's see here. Regional exposure, of course, is North America, predominantly uh, U.S. corporations, and yeah, United States. Um, yeah, and it shows you the weighted exposure and percent of equities. So we have here uh, information technology is a very uh, large percentage of the weighted exposure to of the of the market for this fund. Next comes healthcare, thirteen and a half percent, followed by consumer discretionary spending, um, communications, financials, industrials, consumer staples, utilities, materials, and so on. So information technology is a huge part of, um, of the portfolio. And of course, you can understand why in today's information technology driven uh, economy, like the FANG stocks, Facebook, Amazon, Netflix, Google, uh, Twitter, and so on. Okay, so here we see just some of the many of the 508 total holdings for this fund. Apple comes out at the top, um, followed by Microsoft. Next comes Amazon, and then Facebook, Class A shares, uh, followed by Tesla, Alphabet Inc., uh, Alphabet Inc., Class A and C, which is the parent corporation or holding corporation of Google. Berkshire Hathaway, which is Warren Buffett and uh, Mr. Uh, Munger. Johnson & Johnson, which is pharmaceuticals, JP Morgan Case, uh, Morgan Chase, sorry, and so on. Uh, price analysis, wow, it's going up and continues to go up. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna look at the um, historical US. Now, this is a very interesting graph that you can see here. So since inception, what do you notice? This graph in the long run has predominantly gone up and up and up with a few short periods of it going down. So especially in, uh, during the pandemic, we have March when there was lockdown, the economy came to a screeching halt and we started to do sort of a quarantine reopen, uh, minor lockdowns, the second lockdown going into the fall, winter, and so on. So we can see that in the long run, when you buy the market average, it always goes up. Your eyes do not deceive you and the evidence does not 
live. So this is what's known as evidence-based investing. So in a passive uh, portfolio like Vanguard, you're basically, you pick one and you wait it out. It will always go up over time. So let's see, North American stock market index chart. Let's see here. So this, let's see, where's the one I saw, market indexes. So this is the uh, Dow Jones Industrial Average. And this is going back since, wow, since the early 1900s, all the way to modern times. And you can see it is almost a hockey stick graph of growth, especially in since the 1990s and especially since the, uh, the 2000s. And since the 2000s, we've known an explosion in technology uh, implementation. And uh, around 2008, 2006, we had the birth of the smartphone and the internet just exploded with social media, Facebook, Twitter, Amazon, Netflix, Google, and you can see it just keeps on going. Um, yep, so we can see what is comprised of here. We have, again, Microsoft, Apple, Johnson & Johnson, such as biotechnology. We have Visa, some financials, Grocery, Procter & Gamma, Walmart. So you can start to see a pattern here. So similar to Vanguard, we're investing in uh, corporations that have a very large market cap, which is the, um, the basically the valuation of the company. It is shares outstanding multiplied by the share price. So uh, on stockcharts.com, we can see the Dow Jones Industrial Average from 1900 to present, and we can see it goes up based on the evidence. And I believe down the bottom, this is a uh, trading activity. So next we have the transportation average, and see people need to get around, and it continues to go up. So these are very, very important to humanity. So utilities, the same thing, uh, the more people on the planet, and the more technology we consume is, the, I guess, the greater utility we, we consume on, on a whole, from a behavioral, behavioral point of view. Then we have the S&P 500 large cap index. And what do we see? It still goes up and to the right uh, based on the evidence. So the NYSE New York Stock Exchange Composite Index from 1965 to present, it continues to go up. Same with the NASDAQ Composite Index from 1978 to present. Um, gold spot price, that's interesting. We did have a rise from the, uh, let's see, the 2000s all the way up to 2010 with a correction from 2010 up to 2016 approximately, and then going back up a little bit. So all in all, um, looking at the, the evidence, let me just go back to my camera here. So all in all, looking at the evidence um, in the long run, over time, uh, a passive portfolio that is well diversified and that's tracking the market average, which is represented by the S&P 500 index, will guarantee you a, uh, at least a positive rate of return over time. The reason for that is uh, buying a diversified portfolio um, of stocks in an ETF, like the S&P 500 index, uh, means that you're, you, it can't go to zero. Uh, if it were go, to go to zero, pretty much the world has come to a screeching halt and we no longer exist. So no markets, no nothing. But as you can see, even during this uh, challenging time period we're in, uh, the world still turns, the markets still keep going. Um, there's still commerce and trade and so on. So we can see that it will continue to go up over time. Um, so the most important thing is that um, if you don't put your money in the market, you can't invest. And if you, if you don't put your money in the market, then you can't compound your money. Compounding your money is very important to doing things like getting some rate of return in the future. It also allows you to fight inflation. And it allows you to do these things while you're not actively working or being industrious. It's passive. It's done for you outside of what you're currently doing to make income or to generate some kind of income for yourself, regardless of how you, how you do that. Um, so 
Um, the most important thing about uh, passive investing is the sooner you start is the better off you will be in the future. So if you're a very young person, I suggest you start right away. Don't have your money sitting in a savings account. It is better to have your money sitting in an investing account and to periodically buy more of the passively diversified ETF, S&P 500 index, so that way your money can work harder for you. There are many brokers who allow you to buy um, passive ETFs for zero commission. Um, you can go online and, and find some. I know some like uh, Wealth Simple, for example, is one. Um, I believe uh, Quest Trade is another. And there are other brokerage firms that um, allow you to uh, buy these very uh, simple, uh, diversified, passive investing uh, products, ETF products. So that way you can, you know, um, you know, get better benefit out of your time than, you know, listening for stock alerts and watching ticker. It's, it's really, um, it's really not for everyone, to be quite honest. Most people can meet most or most of their financial uh, planning goals by using a passive ETF and you really only need just one. So that's basically what I wanted to talk about today in this vlog, Sunday vlog. And uh, thank you for taking the time to uh, listen to my vlog. Uh, please, um, please be sure to um, like this video, uh, also to subscribe. Um, make sure to smash the, uh, the notification bell so you'll know when I release new content. And uh, if you really think it's valuable, please take the time to, um, to, to share it with someone uh, as well. And uh, I look forward to uh, seeing you in the next one. And if there are any topics that you'd like me to discuss about you know, food, health, and nutrition, or especially investing, it's one of my favorite hobbies. And uh, I used to do it as a career, as a consultant, financial planning consultant. And um, I'm, I'm, I'll be more than happy to, uh, to share that with you. And uh, you know, as time goes on, the quality will get better, the content will get better. And uh, since I'm just sort of starting out at this. So thank you very much everyone for watching my video. Uh, see you in the next one.